what's up what is going on collective ah mr cmd tower here of course uh you know no just kidding just me mr combo number five super excited to release the kraken chart spark love that uh i'm very excited about this i don't know about you guys but um i've been holding on to what some called sealed product for a wee bit way too long yes uh this is the beetle and grim secret layer here be dragons and i have a sweet collector booster from double masters of course, uh, if you guys wanted to support our channel or anything like that, hit up our amazing patron community, patreon.com slash cmdtower. Uh, you know, we do have an Etsy site where you can search for CMD Tower and a cool partnership with Abyss Proxy Shop. All those ways are great ways that you can help uh, support us. But I don't want to waste any more of your time because I'm pretty sure you're just here to see some cracks of some packs. So let's get to it. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm thinking we got to start with Double Masters, right? There's just no way we can just do the big daddy, which is Beetle and Grimm's, uh, you know, here be dragons. So let's go here. All right, guys, Double Masters. Um, everyone knows that I was a Masters fan. Oh, my gosh. I love all the Masters, uh, especially the original Ultimate Masters. Probably one of my favorite sets next to Modern Horizons. And this one was insanely expensive because they doubled down on everything. And so I guess we're going to kind of see if it was worth it. Not really sure. So apparently they're claiming, claiming that we're going to get two borderless rare and or mythics, one of which will be a traditional foil. We'll also have a foil etched rare or mythic and maybe even a borderless textured foil card. Double the borderless cards, double the luxury, double masters 2022. So let's get to this. All right, uh, just a bit of excessive packaging, but I get it. People steal stuff from uh, the different retailers, so we got to glue it down. Oh, look at that. We open, and it just uh, immediately cracks. Uh, let me tell you, product quality. I see you, wizards. I see you. So uh, I will not actually open this pack uh, as the glue did it for me, so throw that away as well. Okay, so uh, we will start from the front. Of course. Now, one thing that I haven't decided if we're going to do is at the end, uh, kind of pause, do a little calculation to figure out exactly what our value was. We'll kind of see how long this video goes, but um, we're not off to a good start because we got a Bale of Strood Spy. Now, look, I mean, I like a Bale of Strood Spy next to the next person. ETBs, target player reveal cards from top of the library to reveal a land, put them into the yard. It's just a great milk card. Uh, is it worth the, I don't know, I think this was like a $50 pack or $100 pack, I can't remember. No, sir, it is not. So uh, let's just, you know, put that off to the side next to a good old Big Tuck's name. The next we got is a Settle Beyond Roy Reality. All right. Uh, I have, don't think I've seen this particular card. Uh, choose one or both. Exile target creature you don't control. Exile target creature you control that returns to the battlefield under its owner's control for five mana sorcery speed. Oh, trash. Oh, sorry. I just had a little tickle in my throat. Um, all right. Uh, as some people would call this deep analysis. Uh, we got a three colorless blue sorcery. Target player draws a couple cards. Flashback. I actually think this is a decent card, especially in Commander with how many loot effects we have. Being able to pitch this to the yard. And then later in the game, pay three life and two mana to draw two cards. I think that's decent. You know, we'll put that in the Bale of Strood, uh, spy pile as fringe playable, I guess you would say. All right. Skeleton Archer. Uh, this guy. The ETB deals one damage to any target for a 3-3 three, three for four. I don't think you're good. Uh, uh, good old mana leak. Uh, I definitely have a funny story about this. Uh, when I first started playing Magic, someone had told me that I had to pay up to three, and I didn't have a choice. To where it was like, oh, you got to pay three. Well, I don't have three to pay. Oh, well, then you got to pay whatever you have into it. And it's like, what? That's messed up. And also not true. And card's not that great. Uh, counter target spell unless the controller pays three. Okay. Bloodbraid Elf. I believe that's a modern staple. 
uh, Haste and Cascade. All right, I think I'd run that in a deck, so we'll, we'll put that in the playable pile. Maybe I don't have a foil. Maybe I don't. We got a River Hoopy, uh, or I would like to call it, or, oh, I guess it's a Hoopo, but I'd like to call it a Hoopy. Uh, Bird Flying 3 and uh, Simic Gain 2 Life draw a card? Uh, that's unplayable. All right, here we go. Here's the borderless stuff. Monastery Swift Spear. Haste and Prowess, 1-2. I think this card sees play. We'll, we'll put it over here. Okay, this is a card I can I can mess around with. A good old Blood Artist. When it, another creature dies, target player loses life and I gain one. I like that. Speaker of, or Seeker of the Way. It's definitely getting me some, uh, oh man, what is that anime? Uh, is it Spirited Away? No, not Naratu. It'll come to me. The elemental stuff. I don't know. This kind of reminds me of that kid. He's like an air... Oh, <laughs> the last airbender. Uh, totally gives me last airbender vibes. But Seeker of the Way, 2-2, two, two, Prowess. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, it gains lifelink until end of turn. Two mana, 2-2, two, two, okay. I, I can see that being like in a teeny weeny um, Monastery Mentor, maybe even my vehicle deck. That that could that could be decent. Oh, of course, Commander Bait, these Bounce Lands, a Boros Garrison. I mean, it's not good. I'm not glad I got it, but can I play it? Yeah, I I, I can play it. Um, a Dromoka's Command. Uh, sitting over here, prevent all damage, target instant or sorcery spell with deal this turn. Oh, that's pretty funny. Could you imagine being in Silencia and someone's like, okay, Blasphemous Act, and you're like, hey, Dromoka's Command for two? Not quite a counter spell, but kind of a counter spell. Uh, target player sacrifices an enchantment, put a plus one, plus one on counter on target creature. And then uh, target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. And it's a choose two. So that's not bad. I mean, I, I haven't seen that card before. I could see myself using it, though, at some point. Oh, oh, let's go. Let's go, Daddy. City of Brass. I mean, I'm sure it's probably tanked in price, but I just can't get over a City of Brass. I mean, City of Brass. It's just a good card. All right, Retro Foil, Dark Steel Plate. I mean, I got a home for you already and my uh, uh, solo Bird of Prey deck. Uh, with uh, Commander Esha. I think that would be great in there. That's one of the few things they get around her is a board wipe. The Mimeoplasm. Uh, many people are familiar with that. I believe that was one of the first uh, Legends in a pre-con. Uh, if you're not familiar, though, it is uh, ETBs. You may exile two creature cards from graveyards. Uh, it doesn't have to be the same. It doesn't have to be yours. And then if you do it, ETBs is a copy of one of those cards with the number of plus one, plus one counters on it and to the power of the other card. So. Kind of like pick your effects and then pick your powers. You can kind of do a little shenanigans with it. That's a good card. And then we got a Saperling token. That's also a treasure. Yeah, Chart Spark. Grass City, that funky city. But that being my chase card of uh, the pack, I don't know if we actually broke uh, even on that. But maybe or maybe not. We'll see later. So let's put these to the side. And now, do what everyone tuned in to see. Yeah. Um, so the funny story about this, while I open it up, and yes, uh, you could tell that I was in Scout, because normally here is when to get a knife or scissors. I'm like, what is a blunt thing that I can just put in here? And it'll do what I need to do. So this set, I had no idea what it was. Um, I saw, you know, someone mention it on Twitter, hey, like, limited drop, or maybe I even saw the, uh, Twitter advertisement for it. So I went on, and, uh, you know, if any of you guys have kind of listened to me and what's going on in my life, uh, you know, I recently got married, um, and I, you know, kind of did a deal to where it's like, hey, my regular magic purchases I'm not going to do anymore, uh, I'm pretty much just not going to buy magic at all, uh, but... Uh, there's a few different things that I made exceptions for uh, that, you know, I was able to save some money and buy. And this is one that I was like, hey, there's some cards in here that I think I'd like to get. Uh, so sure, I'll go ahead and do it. I had no idea that this was going to be some Chase product. Um, I saw that it apparently sold out in like two hours. Um, a lot of people are hiking up the prices trying to resell pieces from it. So I don't know what to really expect. Uh, I will say the box. Pretty legit. I mean, they really did a good job with this. Um, so, you know, I, it actually, I'll, I'll say this, uh, Beetle and Grimm 
getting this has put them on my radar to where I now kind of regularly go see what they have. They have some very cool exclusive stuff. So if you are someone that's looking for a little bit of flex, um, or you just like to be a little unique, I, I think Beetle and Grimm could probably give you a lot of that experience. So I guess we should do it. All right. Got a nice little insert in here. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to read this because uh, we don't do voices anymore over at CMD Towers. So I think I think you guys would probably enjoy hearing a voice or two. <clears throat> Back in ye old times, medieval cartographers would adorn the empty edges of maps with sprays of bearded dragons, hinting at the magic that lays just beyond the spaces we know. In 2018... We started our own adventure into the unknown edges and built a company whose North Star has always been build things you're passionate about and people will find you. You have found us in this great wide world and we are thrilled. To the Secret Layer team, it has been an absolute joy to create with you at every turn. You push us to be weird and brave and to build the most inspired things. Thank you for the partnership. Enjoy these dragons and their horde. May they bring joy to your table or remind you to journey often into the unexplored edges of life. Bill, Charlie, John, Matt, and Paul. Well, hey, thank you, Bill, Charlie, John, Matt, and Paul. Uh, I think I'm just going to call you guys the Beatles now. Uh, but one thing I did see online that I think we need to be attuned to is apparently there are little Easter eggs in here. They really tried to make this an experience. So I'm going to need you to help me Make sure that I'm not missing the boat here. Hey, Laze. Nice to see you. Oh, and we crack it. And don't worry, Double Masters already made me cry. All right. So we got a little, uh, little thingy here. All right. There's no clear way to open it. So we're just going to slide on out. Ooh, that's fancy. We got a little, we got a little pop-up book here. Oh, oh, that's so tight. All right, so it opens up to this. And here's our first two dragons. Very much like they're guarding the castle. That's pretty sick. All right, so let's see who we got first. So the first one is Old Gnawbone. Uh, that gross, gross green dragon that has flying... Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, create that many treasure tokens. Um, oh, and if you guys were curious, don't worry. We are still kind of tacoed. All right. Well, that's, that's a great dragon. Uh, granted, I feel like that's a very powerful dragon. So, like, maybe it would be deeper into the dungeon. But I, 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 who am I to argue? Uh, the next one is going to be Emerith, Desert Doom. So this is the blue dragon uh, that's flying 5-5. Five, five. It has ward 4 as long as it's untapped. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Then if you have fewer than three cards at hand, draw cards equal to the difference. Um, I, don't, it, I don't know. It, what is, it's fine, I guess. Like, I don't know. I guess it's cool to have a 5-5 five, five with ward 4 that's flying that you're... Pretty much, you know, unless they're going to do instant speed removal, going to get a free attack off of it. But I don't know. Not not the biggest fan of that. All right. But now we're going to progress further into the dungeon. Unleash two more dragons. Oh, my gosh. Who could have thought here be dragons would all be dragons? It's kind of nuts. Uh, but now we got even death. Dracolich. The black dragon. So flash flying 5-2. ETBs tap. Ugh, that kind of sucks. Uh, you may cast from your graveyard if a creature not named Ebedith Dracolith died this turn. Okay. So, kind of cool because you got four mana, cast it. It's a flash. It does come in tap. But even if, you know, there's a board wipe that happens, once it resolves, you can spend that four. Now you got a 5-2 for your next turn. Okay. I could see me running this in my zombie tribal deck. I could easily see me running this actually in my teeny weeny deck because I'm always having stuff die, and a lot of times getting mana that I can't do anything with when they die. So now I have, being able to like have them all die and then pay four to bring this guy out, I like that. That, that is some good utility, um, and I think there'll probably be even more uses in that some other decks. The next one 
is going to be the red one, Inferno of the Star Mount. Oh, man, that's beautiful. Uh, this is Candy Countered. Love that. Flying Haste, 6-6. Six, six. And you pay red whenever uh, Inferno of the Star Mounts gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. When its power becomes 20 this way, it deals 20 damage to any target. So, cool thing about that is, yes, you, in theory, could dump 14 mana into this to deal 20 damage to someone. Seems like a waste of resources. But a lot of times, there's ways that there's Anthem Effect, Pump Effect. You could very easily get this thing to 20 and then just pay one red and then bolt something for 20. That seems pretty powerful. Right. Crazy thing, we're not done. There we go. Oh man. Just the the design and the thought put into this is just second class or uh ne next to nothing. It's first class. I just I'm I'm very impressed. So we, we have, I believe, our final dragon. It's gonna be the mono white one, icing death frost tyrant. Flying Vigilance, 4-3. When it dies, create Icing Death Frost Tongue, a legendary white equipment artifact token with equipped creature gets plus 2, plus 0. Oh, and whenever equipped creature attacks, tap target creature, defending player controls, and equip 2. Okay, I mean, I don't know. Seems It just seems like a generic white good stuff card, potentially. Um, and then we do have the equipment here. Oh, thank you, BT Game Night. Appreciate it. Oh, man. All right. Icing Death Frost Tongue. That is the equipment that we get from Icing Death. Um, it's kind of weird that, you know, when he dies or it dies, we get its tongue. I don't know. Like, don't you think maybe it would be a Talon or it's internal fire? No, no, no. Kill a dragon. I want its tongue. Um, what can I say? I like tongues. It's so this is a token legendary artifact. I do like how they print token on there. That'll ease so many different confrontations that we would see at LGSs. Um, equipped creature gets plus two, plus zero. Oh. When an equipped creature attacks, tap target creature defending player controls, equip two. Just like the car stated, but really nice that they gave us a token for that. Just something else for me to add to my token binder. Let's dive further in. I don't know what else to expect. Oh. Oh, hello. Well, apparently, at the home of all of this, it's Tiamat. Uh, five colors flying when a DTBs. If you cast it, search your library for up to five dragons not named Tiamat, each with different names. Reveal them, put them into your hand, and shuffle. It's a 7-7. Seven, seven. So, I know Tiamat's a, a great uh, dragon lord for uh, commander decks. I personally actually don't have a dragon deck. Maybe this will make me rebuild one. Um, but... I wish they may have done Ur Dragon or, you know, maybe one of the other ones. I think that would have been a little bit more like, oh, wow, but Tiamat, it's, it's fine. I, I, you know, I see you. I see you there, wizards. And then they give us Dragon's Horde. That's pretty cool. Uh, three colorless artifact. When, an ET, when a dragon ETBs, put a gold counter on it. You could tap it to remove a gold counter to draw a card, or you could just tap it in general to add one mana of any color. One could say... A better mana list. Ooh, still taking digs with that trash card. All right. So let's get y'all back into your home. And let's see, because I genuinely don't know what else is in here just yet. Let me put y'all back in. All right. Close the fire. Maybe, maybe it's supposed to go like that? Hmm. Who knows? But all right. Get that done. Oh, well, now you've put out the challenge. Now I'm just going to have to build the memeiest dragon deck possible. Like, no way it's functional and no way it's dragons, but it counts as a dragon deck. Oh, go enjoy work. Thank you for stopping by. Oh my gosh, everyone, this feels like quality. Oh my goodness, okay. I'm usually not a fan of these kind of game boxes, but I might have to, oh man. Oh, that, 
feels so good. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Oh. That is just quality. Can't even be mad at that. Oh my goodness. Okay. This is a game box that you flex with. Um, man. I just can't get over that leather. The leather feels amazing. Okay. Kind of heavy. Let's see who we have in here. Oh. Yes, uh, Laze. All of this came in the Beetle and Grim secret layer. Oh my goodness. I know this will be very hard to see on camera. I'm doing my best for you. Um, holy bananas. That is sweet. So it'll be very difficult to see, but you can see there the 40. Uh, this is a life counter. Oh my gosh, that's so cool! There we go, and you can kind of see there, next to the 20. Man, yeah. Oh my goodness, this is, wow. So I, I'm going to be honest, I, you know, I, I thought it would be quality, you know, especially for the price tag. Um, but I didn't think it would be this nice, I'm going to be honest. Because a lot of times I feel like we get... I don't know, uh, taken advantage of because we're passionate and they're like, hey, we'll put out expensive stuff just for you to get it. Uh, first Beetle and Grimm experience ever. And I, if they do another secret layer, I will a thousand percent buy this. And then, oh my goodness, look at these sleeves. That is very cool. And they feel amazing gosh it makes our cmd tower sleeves seem like crap i mean uh you guys should totally go buy them i'm just kidding um yeah wow these are choice now i have to build a dragon deck dang it see th this is the issue you, you can't you can't let me buy one of your products that's just gonna then make me go spend more money on other products like what do you what are you doing to me so box and we're empty. So that was the Beetle and Grim Secret Layer Here Be Dragons. And, uh, you know, uh, everyone, I think we can agree. This, this box was worth it. Um, it absolutely was. It was a, a great value. You know, I think we will take a very brief break. So that way I can go calculate uh what the value is of these um oh really man i guess i probably need to take a look at that deck box again um uh, but stay tuned only going to take a few minutes break let me go ahead and go plug this stuff into tcg player and then that way um you know we could just kind of see what we ended up with and then we'll just conclude the video and figure out how we did be right back
Yep. Uh, got the good old double masters uh, penalty. Uh, all right. Well, didn't even bother going through these other cards. None of these. Didn't even bother to put them in. Didn't even matter. City of Brass worth thirteen dollars, twelve seventy five. Uh, Mimeoplasm, one dollar. Dark Steel Plate, nine seventy five. Basically ten bucks. And then I kind of stopped at Dromokus Command because it showed up as a quarter. So uh, I think we can say Double Masters. Absolute waste. And let's just see really quick. Because now I'm I'm upset. I am furious about how crappy this pack was. Getting a pack costs you, let's just call it 70 bucks. $20 in value. But here is where your boy came through. Uh, old Knobbone here, that is chilling at a cool hundred dollars. One hundred doll hair. Emrith is coming in at a good, you know, nothing crazy. Uh, twenty-one dollars. Ebon Death. Is coming in at twenty three bucks. Good old Inferno Let's see, Inferno's $27, and then obviously Icing Death and Tiamat. So Tiamat is coming in at 61 and then make sure how to spell icing death. Yeah. I think icing spelled the same way across the multiverse, right? And then icing death is coming in at 18, and that's coming in at 8. So I definitely think the, the Beetle and Grim value is somewhere around that 250 to 300. And that doesn't even include the products that we got with it. So thank God for Secret Layer and uh, Kick Rocks. Cut and pack. Uh, oh, the dragon sword. Good call. Totally forgot about that. Dragon sword. What is that showing up as? That is. Hmm. Well, Casey Hubler doesn't want to. Cooperate, so we're just going to have to go ahead and do the good old Google. All right. 26 bucks for the Dragon Sword. So, yeah, I'd say we're at a solid $300 in cards. And to be frank, the. Uh, even though I probably wouldn't have bought them, the dice or the uh, life counter the deck box and the accessories that they gave I in the, the the card sleeves I would say those are probably to be honest that that life counter is probably a 50 to 60 dollar life counter uh, that box I'd say it's 30 to 40 and um, at bare minimum 
I would say that the card sleeves are probably a twenty dollar pack of card sleeves, uh, just because of the quality. So yeah, I mean we're 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 at like four hundred dollars worth of value here. I mean I think you I think I was able to pick this up for one sixty or two hundred. Can't remember what the actual retail price was, but I definitely will say the secret layer bailed me out for this terrible double masters pack. I'd have been better off selling that sealed on Facebook than cracking it. But hey, say la vie. Well, thank you guys so much for coming out for a special crack pack episode. I know we never do these really. Squee used to do his squeeze crack packs, uh, you know, a couple times a week, but you know, we just haven't been a big crack and pack team. Uh, but you know, of course, as we get them, we want to share that experience with you. So thanks for coming out, and I hope you guys have a great rest of the week and keep enjoying that CMD Tower content. Bye. <laughs>